Good morning, everyone. We're excited to be here with you all um, this Sunday morning, and we just want to invite you all to just worship God with us.
They think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased in that I You're a good, good father. It's who you are. 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 And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. Lord and welcome. We want to thank you for choosing to worship with us today. This is Unity Church of Jesus Christ where Harold and Sharon McKenzie are our senior pastors. Please join us every Wednesday evening at 6 30 p.m. for the encounter. It's a time where we come together to seek our Father through praise and worship and prayer. 
please go to our Facebook page on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 and check for our encounter under live events. We look forward to connecting with you on our social media platforms. On YouTube and Facebook, look for Unity Church of Jesus Christ. Keep up with us on Twitter and Instagram at UCJCNPA. Today's service is a live stream and our church is hosting a restricted number of worshipers due to COVID-19 concerns. Attendees today and in the future are reminded to keep in step with CDC guidelines for COVID-19 prevention. Be sure to submit any newsworthy items to the Unity newsletter. Keep up with your giving at Unity Church of Jesus Christ via mail or by electronic giving. You can mail your checks to Unity Church of Jesus Christ at 2280 Commercial Boulevard, State College, PA 16801. Be sure to write Attention Treasurer on the envelope. For online giving, go to ucjc.org and click Online Giving at UCJC. Have your credit, debit card, or ACH bank account number ready. Please feel free to contact us for prayer or any other matter by using the form at the bottom of our homepage. There, you can relay the particulars of your prayer request or basic question. Indicate if you want someone to follow up by contacting you or if you wish, you can remain completely anonymous. Once again, we would like to thank you for worshiping with us today. Good morning, Unity family, and all of you who are joining us uh, today in this time of worship, uh, in this time of uh, getting into God's Word. Would you take a moment and bow your heads with me? Father, open our hearts to receive from you today. I thank you for helping me to articulate what you once said, but then I also thank you for the working of your spirit to illuminate our being to receive all that you want to do in this day, but not only in this day in the sermon, but as we go forward, the impact of your spirit in Jesus' name. Uh, we then, last week I began a uh, sermon series entitled Keeping Your Edge During Challenging Times. Today uh, I want to continue that and as a subtopic of that, as a subtopic of keeping your edge during challenging times, I want to have as a subtopic having a kingdom perspective. So, what I'm going to be doing today is, in some ways, reiterating two things. One, reiterating some of what I shared with you last week, and then also talking about grace, how important grace is in us keeping our edge, in us uh, leading a life that has an edge that gives victory. Um, but back to what I said first, that I want to reiterate some things that I shared with you uh, last week. But I want to, in the context of them and having a kingdom perspective, go a, go a little deeper. I want to help you to see that some things that you may already know through a kingdom lens perspective, a perspective of God's view in these times that we're in. Last week, as I mentioned to you, we are living in uncertain and challenging times. And the devil, Satan and the forces of hell are at work against us. Their work against us as we are trying to navigate uh, these physical and emotional and financial times of distress. If you look at the atmosphere we see, and we are experiencing uh, health, the, the, the tension that comes from uh, the uncertainty of health and uh, this pandemic, but also we're looking at social tension through uh, the issues of racism and, and in the aftermath of this 
uh, the election, the atmosphere is filled with uncertainty and tension. Uncertainty and tension, and along with that, the grief of the loss, the fear of what is happening or what might happen and what we don't know in, uh, in terms of the future, despair, and then along with those things, frustration and strife and division. So we are in a time where the stress level and the tension and the anxious like we've never experienced before. And as I mentioned, our adversary is definitely at work against us. But, beloved, we also know and we understand, as Paul teaches us in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that our Heavenly Father loves us and He has a redemptive plan. And, beloved, here's what's so powerful that we need to understand as we look at this in a kingdom perspective. He wants us and He has ordained for us, you and me, to be a part of that plan. Amen. So we are being prepared. We are being prepared, beloved. Our Father has been, He is, and is continuing to prepare us to participate in this redemptive plan. So we need to have the perspective that this is something that we have a part in what God is doing right now. We have a vital part to play as we look at the culture, as we look at the circumstances of our world. God is not up in heaven. Heaven has not stopped. The kingdom purposes of God have not streaked to a, a grinding halt. But God has a plan, and beloved, if you're sitting there with somebody, you ought to say this to them, we are a part of it. Amen. So what does it look like? And in that, I think the question that we need to ask ourselves, what does it look like for us to be the church in these times? Amen. Recognizing that our Father is both preparing us and challenging us to go to new spiritual levels of maturity. He's been preparing us to move higher, and he's also challenging us to move higher. I ask this question, what does it look like for us to be the church? I'm not talking about part of having a kingdom perspective is understanding that you, we are the church. This place where we assemble is not, this is the building, but the body of Christ, a, a, a kingdom perspective is that we, the body of Christ, we are the church. So what does it look like? And as he is preparing, he is saying, what does it look like for us to go to new levels of maturity? And he's challenging us to do that because we are part of his plan. He wants us to know, beloved, that we are not trapped by the limitations of these times. Like I said, the kingdom has not come, the purposes of heaven have not come to a grinding hope. But instead, the stop signs that we are encountering in this hour are really opportunities for new revelation. If we let the God, Holy Spirit open our eyes, we will see that the, the things that if we look at, maybe what is a hindrance, what is an obstacle, what seems to be overwhelming is an opportunity for God to do something new in and through your life. Amen. To see things from a, a new perspective, to see opportunities in new paradigms through the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Lord is in this time changing, you know, the way we see ourselves, beloved. You may feel weak. You may feel overwhelming. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is wanting to change the way you see yourself. Not, not you know, we're in tough times, but in them, He wants you to have a kingdom view of yourself. He wants you to have a, a, a kingdom view in these difficult times of yourself, but also as we see ourselves as the church, He wants us to have a view that we are coming alive. We are not stagnant. We are not being pushed back. 
we are meant to come alive. What does it look like for the church to come alive in these times? So, Holy Spirit has been comforting us. He has been, uh, we need, I mean, you may be, as you're listening and watching this morning, you may feel totally overwhelmed. And so, you're asking me, why in the world are you saying these kinds of things to me? I'm saying to you because, you know, the Lord is comforting. We need His sustaining power. We need His strength. We, so many of us are overwhelmed by the weight of these challenging and uncertain times. And Holy Spirit is there as a comforter. He is there as a sustainer and one to give you strength. But beloved, also, He is teaching us. The Bible says He teaches our hands to war. As the, the, the devil schemes what He's teaching us to stand as a mighty people. He, he's teaching us, He is refining us, and He is sharpening us. So He is going to sustain you, but because of this plan that you are attached to, we are being taught, we are being refined, we are being sharpened for a mighty thing. We are in training to be victorious in Christ. You are meant to thrive through this difficulty. You are meant to come out the other side. So you are being trained to live in victoriously in the finished work of our wonderful Lord Jesus. Even as Paul teaches us in Romans chapter 8, verse 7, paraphrasing, he says, we're not just meant to hang in there. We are not, this is not time. Uh, I, I, the, the natural impulse, beloved, is to hunker down and try to make it through. That is not the kingdom perspective. We are meant to, and the weight of it, strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost, we are meant to thrive and move forward. Beloved, I'm telling you something. In times like this, if you look throughout church history, in times like this, it is in the difficult times. As we look to the Lord, to the Lord and we understand that He is our edge, and we understand scriptural uh, perspective, the church, it, he gives us a strength that we don't have on our own. He brings us through and up and over. And so we need to have, as we're looking at this, we need to have a scriptural perspective, a scriptural view of the times we're in. I want you to look with me in Second Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 1, reading this short verse. He says, Tim, uh, Paul writes to Timothy, but realize this that in the last days, difficult times will come. Now, I'm not saying to you, and, and Paul, obviously, but Paul wrote that to Timothy a long time ago, that these are, uh, that the, these are the last days in terms of, uh, I'm saying that the uh, coming of the Lord is preeminent. But every day we live the day closer to the coming of our Lord. And the scriptural perspective is one that understands that as we are continuing toward the coming of our Lord, the days are not always going to be easy. I think as the body of Christ, beloved, and at large, so often, um, as God is touching our perspective, uh, we have a perspective that church in the life of living with God is all about us and how blessed we can be. And our Lord wants us blessed. He wants the uh, uh, blessing to flow in our lives. But let me give you a perspective of what this scripture means as we go forward and as we understand, because see, we're living in a new normal. A normal where we're seeing challenges and uncertainty and we're experiencing the stress of these. And as we are living in this new normal, our Lord, beloved, our Lord is going to bring us through COVID-19. He's going to bring us through. And He's going to bring us through the challenges uh, that we are dealing with. But He also wants us to understand something. And we see in the teaching that is in John chapter 16, verses 32 and 33, we get a perspective here that we need to have and understand as God's children. And that is, um, the Lord is teaching.
17, verse 2, 32, our Lord is, is talking to the disciples, and he's telling them, listen, in verse 32, uh, your world is about to be turned upside down. Because he's getting ready to, to go to the cross, and their, their lives are going to be taken to the core. And then, but he tells them, uh, get this, in verse 33, I'm going to give you my peace. He says, my peace I give you. Now, I want you to look at the back end, because again, so often, when we equate peace, again, a, a growing our perspective, when we equate peace, we solely equate peace so often as to life is easy. But he is talking, I'm going to give you my peace, my pride through infested peace, that is a peace that you receive in the middle of difficulty. So here's what he says to him. Because in this life, you're going to have trials and troubles and difficulties. This is the scriptural perspective. We're going to get through COVID-19, but if we're going to have a uh, 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 a part of God's redemptive plan is the kingdom of God is going to impact the culture of the world. If our edge is going to, to have an impact, then we have to understand that there's going to be a demonic resistance. And there's going to be a resistance from those who do not know the love of the Lord. So here's what he's saying. You're going to have trouble. But here's what I'm He says this. This is our assurance, beloved. This is what ought to make you shout that in whatever trouble you are facing right now, whatever challenges and uncertainty that we are dealing with right now, or in the future as we walk in God's plan, He says, I want you to know through my finished work, I went to the trenches and I overcame. And so my peace, my strength comes because I am living in and receiving the overcoming power of Jesus Christ at work in my life and at work in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. So we see what he's saying there. So we are living, listen, we are living right now victorious lives. I speak over you, beloved, in the midst of what you're going through, even if you're going through unspeakable grief, that God is with you in your valley, and He is going to bring you through victoriously. And not only are we meant to go through it victoriously, we are meant to advance the kingdom of the gospel. We are meant to advance the kingdom of God in this gospel. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. We're advancing this gospel so that he might be lifted up and might be glorified. So we see that our victory lies in that. And in the midst of these times also, here's what God is doing in these uncertain times. In the midst of this time, right now, open your heart. Our God, by his Spirit, is drawing us closer to him. He is realigning our spiritual priorities. And He is igniting, bless the Lord, He is igniting a fire within us, a holy hunger for Him, because everything else is being shaken. But God is with you right now, beloved. He is with you, and He is igniting a holy hunger His purpose is to ignite a holy hunger in the hearts of His people. A passion for what He is passionate for. See, when you're connecting to God like He is drawing us in this hour, okay, you listen, don't run from God. Run into Him right now. Because as you are running into Him, He is igniting the heart of the church. With a passion, his desire is to give us a passion for what he is passionate for. He is he is setting the fire of the altars of our hearts individually, the altars of our home, to the end that we, the body of Christ, will become a passionate, on fire army with a new perspective. That is a perspective of advancing all that is of God. Like I said to you earlier. 
heaven is not shut down, and you're a part of what heaven wants to see accomplished in this hour. And he is setting us a fire. Yeah, I told you that the devil is at work, but I'm telling you, he is rising up an indignant, a holy, indignant army that will say, we refuse to let you overcome. You will not have my home. You will not have my life. You will not have my neighborhood. I am I'm telling you, God is at work to set our hearts on fire, beloved. So as we journey through these times, and in these challenging times, as I've shared all this with you, you need to know that we have an end. Like I shared with you last week, in the topic of this, this series, we have an end. We have an end. His presence, His presence abiding in us and manifesting through us. That's what gives us an advantage and distinguishes us from all other people during these times. The presence of God abiding in you, but not only abiding in you, beloved, manifesting himself through you. Remember, uh, and, uh, paraphrasing Exodus chapter 33, as, as uh, the Lord, Lord and and Moses are having this discourse in verse 16. He said, it is your presence that sets, apart, sets us apart from all people. And in this challenging day that you are in, it is the presence of the living God that sets you apart from all other people. Let me give you an example of that, a New Testament example. Let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and read there. He says, the impact, that you, so that we can see the impact of the presence of God in you and the presence of God being manifested through you. Okay? So, he says here, Paul, I mean, the writer of Acts, right? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. I want you to understand this. You shall be, underline it, you shall be my witnesses in both Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and as far as the uttermost part of the world earth. The Holy Spirit the, is your edge. He is inside of you. God is all around you, but the Holy Spirit inside of you is what gives, sets you apart and gives you an advantage in every situation. But he, li, listen to what he says here. It is basically what he's talking about. The kingdom perspective is that, yes, the power of God helps me and strengthens me and delivers and provides for me. But the kingdom perspective is that the power of God, we're, we're broadening our perspective from it being about us to understanding that God will take care of us. It's about what His purpose is. The broadening of our perspective says that it is for His glory. The power of God is in your life for your glory. For his, I'm sorry, for His glory. Okay, Holy Spirit is not only for us, but it is a power to be manifest through us as a witness to spread the gospel. As a witness to spread the gospel. Amen. How many of you really want to see the power of God manifest? Well, if we in the body of Christ, if we, if we just come together and we just are just praying for each other, God, yes, will answer our prayer. But if you want to see miracles, signs, and wonders, if you still want to see a breakthrough in your personal home, begin to see that the power of God is not just for you in your personal space, but it's for to be ministered outward. And that's what he's saying there in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It is the ministering power of the Holy Spirit outward. But, but all of it also, we have to understand that the Holy Spirit in us is our solid rock in the storms and battles of life that you are facing right now. Holy Spirit in you is your rock. You stand on Him. Understand that we can stand on the, the when I say he is, that He is a solid rock, that you stand on the integrity of the Godhead. That's right. You stand
stand on the integrity of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. They, they are true that our Lord Jesus, if you are standing in faith, that our Lord Jesus is true. This is so important right now that you have to understand the perspective in shaking times when things are unsettled, that there is a rock, a stable rock that cannot be shaken, that cannot be, that, that cannot be um, um, taken under, but He is faithful, He is true, you can count on Him, you can put your life, you can set your life on the truth of who God is. When He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, you can count on that. It does not matter how uncertain and how unstable life seems to be in front of you. It does not matter how big the mountains that the adversary puts in front of you may seem. We serve and we stand on the integrity, the truth of who Jesus is says He is, and what He says He has done, and what He has provided for, but also in and through our lives for His kingdom. Amen. So you can stand on the integrity of Scripture. That is so important. We have to understand, we stand on the integrity of God's Word. He said, I'm not a man, like I shared with you last week. I'm not going to lie. I cannot be tempted with sin. I am God Almighty. Because now, why is that important? As we understand about keeping our edge and, and having an edge and making it and, and, and having overcoming power in these challenging times, it is important because we're going to have to contend, beloved. A, a deeper perspective is understanding that we are going to have to contend. God does not have to contend for His work. He is God. If the whole world and universe decided not to believe in God, he, he will not stop being God. Jesus will still be Jesus. We must contend for His Word. As Jude teaches us in verse 3 and 4, see, we must contend for the integrity of God's Word against those false things that would try to come in and cause us to see Jesus and His Word differently than what it is. God does not have to contend for His Word, but the enemy would want us in subversive, subversive ways try to enter into the body, causing us and wanting us to lose our edge and try to enter in with false things, undermining things in the way we see our Lord and the way we see our word, His Word. Amen. So we must be determined, beloved. We must be determined to keep our edge. To stand as individuals. To stand, beloved, in your home. To stand for your children. Amen. To stand in the truth and to stand individually, to stand in our homes, to stand as a corporate body, to stand against the schemes of hell, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. To stand against those schemes because here's the subversive work of our adversary. Now listen to me. He is to, to subtly have the ideology of the world begin to influence the body of Christ. That's right. If you look at it, we look you look in our school. If your child is in a non-Christian school environment, look at the ideologies. It's not just the education. Understand me. Look at the ideologies that are being taught within the school. Look at the at media. Look at media and what is coming across the airways. Look look at the the, the public policies that are being uh, put forth in our government. Can you step back and see, say that in all three of those areas, when we look at our university, what does the, you know, uh, Penn State University respectfully says we're all in? Well, what does all in? Is all in biblical? But, and the challenge is, beloved, that those ideologies are causing a subtle shift in 
in the search from the truth as the enemy wants to influence us in that way. And so the devil's scheme, beloved, the devil's scheme is to neutralize us. To neutralize us. See, so that we might have a form of godliness, religious form, but no real power to impact both uh, have victorious lives ourselves, but also to impact the world. Because our power comes from our edge. Let me just look at it again for a moment. We're, 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 there's such a battle in the law. Now look at how much, just on the issue, for example, of race or other things. We, we've got so much legislative. But beloved, the calling on the body of Christ is to make eternal change. Legislation, while it can be good, only makes a temporal change, but it can tell a person how to act, but only the power of Christ at work through you to touch others as we fight the fight, as we draw the line and do the spiritual warfare with the edge of the power of Almighty God working in us and through us. We can make eternal change. See, we can have a man who's only doing, a person who's only doing what is right, who's only uh, obeying the laws as it pertains to race uh, because he has to or she has to, using that as an example. We can have the impact that will cause them to see Jesus in their heart. Amen. Amen. So that life so we don't want to, his scheme is like uh, that we have to fight against is that we be like that old knight that our edge becomes dull. Like old salt, we become tasteless and are, are, uh, to the world that needs the flavor of the living Christ that can only come through us. Matthew 5, verse 13. You know, we, uh, because he, like I said, he wants to neutralize us so that we've lost our flavor to the world. A flavor that only we can give. But, you know something? Well, I, uh, I share this with you. Here's what we have to, to fight. Here's how we have to fight. You know, you see, like I said before, this happens when the doctrines of the world influence the church. But the Lord says, listen, he says, contend so that you don't give the devil a foothold. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. And that you don't quench the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And see, that's what we, we do not want to quench God's Spirit. We want to be empowered by His Spirit. And the way to do that is to contend for the truth and the validity of the world. Well, in the last part of my message, the question is, how, how do we do that? You know, how do we do that? How do you keep your edge? Well, I'm going to tell you something. You, you, we can't do that on our own. And that's why we need grace. We need grace because we need God's supernatural empowerment to help us do what we can never really do on our own. And that's how I want to wrap up today in the next few minutes, to help you to understand and, and to, to, uh, as you are trying to navigate these challenging times, as you are wanting to embrace a kingdom perspective and how you, the, the, the edge, the presence of God at work through your life is so powerful that really on your own, we're going to fail. We're going to fail. Now, I want to give you that example. Go back to Exodus chapter 33, verse 3. And you see, yeah, as, as the Lord says, I'm not going to go with you. He tells Israel, I'm not going to go with you. I am not going to go with you. I'll send an angel, but my presence, that was really, that may seem harsh, but really, it was an act of love. It was an act of grace and mercy on display. Because God knew that they would not be able to, to walk with Him. He is a holy and righteous God. 
and he knew that they would not be able to walk with him the way they needed. He knew that they would fail. And if they would fail, his, 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 uh, his judgment would be upon them. And we saw throughout, if you follow Exodus and the books of Moses that he wrote, you see the people, just, they're so up and down. But, beloved, I'm that way. You're that way. That we have to understand, you see, we can't keep our... I, I mentioned earlier, what do you need to do to keep your edge? But the reality is, as I look at what we're doing, uh, we can't keep our edge on our own. We need help. Yes, beloved, we need help to keep our edge. And that help comes through the grace of God. In Second Corinthians chapter Chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, Paul gives, shows us the power of grace to help us do what we can't do on our own. As Paul is in a personal str- struggle in the Holy Spirit, God says to him, my power will help you do what you cannot do on your own. If you're trying to just stand up right now in these challenges, if you're just trying to lift your head up, you understand you don't have of yourself you don't have the strength to lift, to lift your head, but you have an edge, the Holy Spirit that is inside of you, that will help you have the strength to get up in the morning. That will help you have this and, and, and guide you through your time of grief. That will help you in what else seems overwhelming or just help you do the will of God that we're talking about today. You have an edge in the Lord, and that's what God is teaching Paul here. He says, my power will help you do what you can't do on your own, beloved. And he goes on, Paul says, therefore, so when I am weak, that is, when I can't do it on my own, your power will help me. Hallelujah. When I can't do it on my own, I'm leaning into his strength. And it's not just a, a mental exercise, but God saying the living power of heaven will, is available in your life to strengthen you, to lift you, to empower you to do God's will, to empower you to be encouraged, to empower you to do whatever you need, beloved. So, the good news is this. It's his capacity and not ours. Romans chapter 11, verse 6, but it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of work. Since otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. He is saying, basically, to me, I feel, if you're like me right now, you spend a lot of time feeling in over your head. As we look at the world around us, as we are experiencing personally and walking with others in their circumstances, as we look for a time of change and that God is getting us through this, and as we have a perspective, again, as I said to you earlier, of what God is calling us to, what God is calling you to as a, as a body of Christ, beloved, there's a church coming alive. What God is calling you to is way over your head. It's way over mine. Walking through this time uh, and, and dealing with so many of the challenges is beyond our capacity. In over our heads to live victoriously during this victorious time, to be the body of Christ in the world around us, to stand against the works of the devil. But going back to Exodus chapter 33, verse 3, it was never about their capacity. And beloved, it's not about ours either. So what's our response? What's our response to this? What do we do? Well, I need to, here's what we need to do. We need to be intentional. As I close, we need to be intentional. What do I mean by that? You need to be intentional about embracing grace. Again, go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. Paul says again, I gladly embrace God's strength when I am weak. Don't get, feel like, oh, don't judge yourself. Don't, um, you know, say, well, don't focus on your weakness. This is the best way for me to say this to you. Don't focus on your weakness. Run into God's 
strength. That's how you embrace grace. You run into his strength. You be intentional about running into his strength on a daily basis. Lord, I can't make it through this day lest you help me. Also, you be intentional about obedience and surrender. Obedience and surrender. When you surrender to God, you draw his strength to you. When you say, I want to surrender myself, help me to surrender. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And he says that we are to give ourselves as kingdom citizens. And we want to see the power of God break through in these difficult days. And we want to see our edge be magnified. The way the presence of God is magnified through our lives is through surrender and obedience. But I am great. I am intentional about that. And I say, Lord, also, this is me. Lord, I can't obey you unless you help me. I can't be what you want me to be. I want to surrender. Help me. I want to be yielded. Help me. So I am intentional about embracing uh, grace. I am in an embracing grace. I am intentional about asking his help to be obedient and surrender to him. I am intentional understanding in all of this, I humble my heart before Almighty God. This is my posture on a daily basis. Lord, it is your power. It is you in this day that we are living in. You are the key to victory, and I am not. You are God, and I am not. So therefore, I claim your word, paraphrasing James chapter 4, verse 6, that God, you said you give grace to the humble. And so I humble. I give up my rights. If I am going to see a, 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 a kingdom manifestation of your power in these difficult days, I have to be willing to give up my rights. And so, Lord, I humble myself to you. Now, lastly, beloved, we say to him, Lord, as I am doing that, I believe in grace that all I need to do is obey you and show up. What I mean? What do I mean by that? To be available to participate in his redemptive plan and purpose in this hour. That's all. To be intentional about just being available to him. So by doing that, you show up so he can show out. When you just make yourself available in humility before him, depending upon his power and grace, he will begin to show out for you. And I believe that in this day, whether it be in your personal circumstances, whether it be in the outward work of his redemptive plan through your life, God is going to show up mightily by the power of His Spirit. Your edge is going to be manifest Him. He is the edge. The power of God is going to be manifest in your life. So in conclusion today, in conclusion, God is saying, I want you to begin to see things from your own perspective. I want one to help us to see this and to church is meant to be alive and have a kingdom it's not about us. It's about God. God will take care of us. And His grace will help us. And we focus on His grace, not ours. That's the difference against the wiles of the devil who can take us to the kingdom of God. And when we are not in the kingdom of God, Father, thank you for your time. And I thank you for the work of your spirit in my heart. In my heart, all who are listening to you, you are God. You are the gift of our faith. The enemy is at work. The plan is done. 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 So it's not just about us, but Lord, that we will see your plan and the will of God as the end of the world and the perfect members of the body of Christ. I pray for those who are in the world and the people of the world, whether it be in their health, in their finances, in their emotions, in their or whatever their circumstances are. You are the God who supplies them with the Lord. Thank you.